Hello and welcome to Tights TV. Uh, we've got Full House again, Andy, Charlie and Dave. Glad that you're all on. Um, quite a bit to talk about and we'll go into what we thought aside about uh, Port Bell game coming up in midweek. So, Charlie, uh, come to you first. Good performance, uh, atmosphere, uh, you know, clean sheet, a few debuts. What do you take on Batman, mate? Yeah, um... I think overall it were a, a good solid performance. Um I think we we did what we had to do when we went down to ten men. Um I think fans got engaged a bit more and you know, I think if it weren't for fans it might not have been as easy, you know, as what it were. It gave players a bit of a lift. Um and I think yeah, like I say overall it was it, it was what we needed to do, especially after obviously Watters getting sent off. Yeah, I mean, just getting on about that kind of hero to zero, Andy. Uh, again, scores, but we're just on about it. What it straight red. I, I until this morning, I had a look at it. I thought it was leading with arm. Did their players make referee decision? No. Debatable. Uh, what will you take on Batman, mate? Just wait, red card. Yeah, I mean, in real time, when I was. Um... Well, well it, it happened a bit too quick for me um, when I was there. Um, and I thought it's going to be a yellow at most. But, yeah, when I saw it back, um, yeah, I don't think there's no complaints, really. Um, to me, a definite red card. And I'll be honest, I think he, I think he let us down a little bit there. Um, put team under unnecessary pressure. Um, and there were no need for it, really. Um but yeah, no complaints after seeing it back. Um, and yeah, it, it, I think he'll be very, very disappointed uh, with that. And I, th I think uh, staff and rest of players should be as well. Because uh, like I say, put, put us under unnecessary pressure, I thought. Um, just just no cause for it at all. Yeah, I mean, making his debut as well, Addy, uh, is dead as well. I don't know what you are to come this day, but I thought when Collins, it was rumoured to be out, it's going to be between four and six weeks. But what I saw Addy yesterday is that he was kicking well, distribution were well, pulled off a right save in the second half. Uh, Dave, I mean, you take up some at debut with John Russell as well, coming on in the second half. He looks a bit of a play, doesn't he? With some at turns and what he was going to do. What we take on overall with debuts, what what, what you saw there, Dave? Yeah, I thought um, both were very impressive. Um, with his stead, it's a little bit difficult to judge the all-round game because he didn't really have much to do apart from that. That's even the second half. <clears throat> but no, he looked comfortable. He looked like um, he was in good contact with the rest of the defence. Uh, like you said, his distribution was great. I think... Um, with Collins sometimes, I think not not just with Collins, but with other keepers we've had, their distribution has been a bit wayward sometimes. But um, I think he had a bit more time yesterday as well, mm. which um, which might have helped him. Um, Russell, he, you know, he, I saw him when he came on against Portsmouth last week and, um, you know, for a few minutes. And he, he looked good then. You know, he looked comfortable on the ball, but we had a better, a better look at him yesterday with a 4.45. And um, he looks... He, again, he's, he's fitted in. He, he seems to know the, the lads well already. Um, some of those touches yesterday were a little bit naughty, weren't they? Uh, <laughs> some of them was um, dragging it back. And um, oh, he's just... I, I, it, it amazed me when we got him. And, you know, judging by the 45 we saw yesterday, it's amazing that no one else has come in for him because he does look like a championship quality player. And mm -hmm. um, looking forward to see what more he can do for us. Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, like I said... I was surprised if it was more transfer I was expecting, but we came in and like, yeah, we'll take that all day long because I thought he played pretty decent to Huddersfield and some of their fans were like, you know, you, you've got to play here. You know, all being well, Duff can get a tune out of him. Get on about Duff, Charlie. I mean, went down to 10 men after the first half <clears throat> and I thought his substitutions, he more or less got spot on. I think he, he altered it, he addressed it and I think it's for, for quite some time for me, to, for a manager to make that kind of call, bringing two on at half time to go for two to give that cushion rather than sit, sit back and go for, you know, we can do this on just one goal, you know, league kind of thing. What what we take on substitution when we come on second half, but it 
you know, I, I thought it were a bit of a masterstroke, if I'm being honest. Yeah, um, I mean, I was talking to my uncle downstairs and stand at half time, and I said to him, I said, Look, I says, I've got a feeling he's going to take a defender off and put another striker on. And I think it's the best thing he could have done. Um, I think the substitutes that he brought on were, were phenomenal. Um, it just goes to show the, the tactical genius that he can be sometimes. And it's them substitutes that he brought on kind of changed that game for us because we were under a bit of pressure mm -hmm. just before half-time. Obviously, we've seen it out. We've come to half-time. These substitutes have come on. And it's like we're playing with 11 men again because of the confidence that we had on ball, mm -hmm. the, the drive that the players had. Um, and just quickly going back to red card, I mean, for me, I think it, it were a straight red as well. So it's it, it just goes to show, you know, um, he, he has got it. He, he knows what to do. He's got a plan B. And obviously yesterday it proved to work. Yeah, Andy, I mean, Duff's got a plan B. I think it helped in January, transfer windows. He's got, now he's got them kind of options as well. Um, yeah. Rumours are that Thomas and... Um, a few other players are not going to be fired off from joining for his team to get even more options as well. So just going on back with following on from Charlie, I think us as fans as well, but stands could you could like relate to that. You know, uh Williams got his goal from outside at box. That yeah. confidence, and I think Duff said he alluded to it after his uh post-match uh, uh questions where he got answered, is that the fans the sends like helped us through that we uh Players were running down, like you Norwoods. We know we're going to get from him, but you're, you know, you know, you're going to get that bit of the dark art from Norwood and he's going to play it defended. And but he like alluded to it, the players bought into what the fans were doing, so it like worked a, a bit of both. We we knew what players were wanting to do, but players reacted to it, and I think that won't well, probably won't the best this season. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, Nick Tech Norwood logged out to get booked, did he? <laughs> what, like first minute when he, when he came minute. on. But uh, yeah, I had to uh, have a little chuckle to be said when that happened yesterday at March. But uh, um, yeah, uh, substitutes were uh, spot on. Um, I thought we controlled the game even with 10 men. And what a goal uh, Williams um, took. Uh, it was my man at match anyway before that. Um, mm. But there were a few you could pick. Um, but yeah. Um, it, you know that 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 lad seems to be getting uh, better and better, and I think that's filled up as well. Um, but yeah, you can see confidence uh, through the team, and when you've got that, that's half your battle. Um, yeah. I think, in, especially in this league, because um, you could see that they were trying to um, well make it scrappy in midfield, especially. I thought midfield were really scrappy, um, especially at first half. Um, but yeah, um, excellent substitutions by Duff, and that's what we've been lacking in last God knows how many seasons. Um, team last season, we, we wouldn't have wouldn't have come through that with ten men, nowhere yeah. near. Mm. Yeah, good shout that. Uh, you've already touched on it there, Andy. You, you said that Jordan Mills we are man at match. I mean, Dave, what we any of the players stood out for you? Um, Jordan got man of the match, uh, back match sponsor. There were a few around me saying yeah for his overall and his, his goal over a few other players in contention. But who were your man at match uh, for that game, mate? Uh, Jordan Williams for me. Uh, you know, like Andy said, even before the goal, he was he was playing really well. And um, he just looks a completely different player. Mm. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he's always given 110%, you know, whenever he's played for us. And. Um, you know, sometimes his his, his attitude to the game out, outweighs his, um, his abilities. I thought, and you know, Duff seems to have done something to him that have you know brought out these abilities that you know he's shown on occasions, but not you know not continuously. He, I can't remember the last time he had a bad game. If I'm honest, he just he just seems so full of confidence, you know, and. You know, he's, he's, he's fantastic getting the tackles in, you know, he's great getting forward, he gets back as well, and he's been chipping in with the goals this season as well. You know, something's happened in that changing room and he's a completely different player. And mm. it's it's absolutely brilliant that he's not gone to Preston because that would have been a massive loss. Yeah. 
Uh, we're going back to other players. I can't really pick out anyone that had a, a bad match yesterday. Mm. I mean, Cole, you know, ran his socks off again. Um, I, I'd like him to have a shot a little bit earlier. Sometimes he tries running it too far. You know, running down to the byline every time and trying to cut it back. You're the striker. You have a go. You know, mm. you try to put it in the back of the net and start to lay it back to somebody else. But, um, you know, again, he's been running, you know, he's been running from start to finish, uh, putting a great performance. Um, Connell, you know, again, down that left. Um, he started, the, he started in, in the centre, didn't he, in the first half? I thought mm. it was a bit weird. Mm. Um, but, you know, he's obviously better when he's out on the left. Um, Cadden, I thought, he seemed a bit off it yesterday to me in the first half, which is possibly why he was substituted at half time. Mm made a deaf decision easy for him. But um yeah the defence looked strong again. I thought Kitchen played well yesterday. He um he, he worries me sometimes but you know there was one challenge I think in the first half yesterday. I thought oh mm. but no he's, he he calmed down after that. And um yeah, no one's no one's had a bad game for me. It's been a all round team performance and um mm. perfect timing because it was against um a, a team that were they're, they're not great. I don't want to Say how bad I thought they were because that'd be disrespectful, but they're one of those teams that we've struggled against this season, you know. For me, and I thought towards the end of the first half when we went down to ten men, we looked a little shaky. Um, you know, they were getting, they were having all the possession. We were just chasing shadows, and you know, we we're going to tire ourselves out after that. But obviously, Duff's you know pulled a master stroke at half time, completely changed it, and um, you know, everyone's come out again and. Got hold of the game by the scruff of the neck, and you know they've got the win. But um, all round team performance for me yesterday, and you know single out Jordan Williams because I thought he was fantastic. But apart from that, you can take a pick for anybody else that would be second behind them because they were all fantastic yesterday. Yeah, good point, Charlie. Uh, both gone for Jordan Williams, mate. Uh, what's your take on man at match? <clears throat> uh, yeah, I think Williams had a good game. Um, I really do. And it's a it's a tough one for me. I'd have probably been going with uh, Bobby Thomas, just yeah. because the it, it again it's not it weren't every single thing. It weren't up down up down. But the especially when Waters was still on pitch, the balls that he was playing for him to run behind him and everything. I just think obviously they've mentioned that they need that killer pass and that pass that obviously. It, it gets in between lines. I think you were doing that a hell of a lot yesterday. And mm. it's not taking it away from Williams. Um, I think you were solid at back. Um, Thomas, I think uh, it, it's a tricky one. It's good. You know, it's good that we can speak about four or five players. I'd have either gave it to Thomas or Williams. Um, but again, Connell had a good game. Um, obviously, Watters had a good game before he... He, he, was, he made a, a stupid decision and and got sent off. Um, but yeah, I'd have, for me, Thomas, but again, Williams deserved it. So credit to him and it, it goes to show what a what a good, obviously, fullback he is. Yeah, good point, Thomas. Uh, yeah, I, I will, it's like what Dave was saying. I think we all put a shift in, especially when we went down 10 man. Um, it, it was a short character and with formation changing as well, going back. Uh, from a back three to like playing four at back, I think it showed your adaptability, uh, uh, Williams. So for me, Williams got it uh, just for being obviously getting goal and understanding his role when it changed, uh, not to be, you know, playing in a back three anymore, but also a back four. So adaptability there. Connell again, you're always going to get Connell via the via bats, wanting to play, trying to dictate play, and uh, and again, Cole running, running his socks off. And yeah, I, I'm with you, Dave, with that is that just have a pop up goal a bit more often. Um, it seems to be stuck on this, you know, goal tally figure, what's not really budging at the minute. And that's not just taking away his work off at ball, but sometimes I just want to be up in the monster a bit more with goal, goal threat. Uh, great to see as well. Um, and walking off, signing autographs. I, I know stewards were like trying to rush a uh, Luca and Vanti on, but we'll take a time out signing. Because we're walking right edge at pitch. Uh, Julian and Khalid, you know, that's off to them. They, they put the up in firing line up at Ponty end. We all uh, rabble. Uh, so, again, some people like call and say, yeah, it's a PR exercise and this other, but 
you know, they could get a lot of verbals and all from that. So, credit to them for doing that. Uh, for me, I'm going to get Williams, but I take your point via Charlie about Thomas as well. Um, and I was talking to someone just before the game, and it's like he's been a bounce player for a couple of seasons. Thomas is slotted him back well at back. So, again, another another duff player that he knows, and it can only be better for the club. Just wish he were our player, not on loan. Yeah. So we're going to Port Vale game, uh, Andy, midweek. Bit of a pitch, what's a bit ropey to set best. Mm. I mean, obviously, Colin's going to be missing from this. What is will be, whether it's a, is it a straight red dangerous conduct? Is it a pre game ban bat? Yeah. yeah. I mean, going to Port Vale game, I mean, it's a dodgy ropey pitch that. I mean, we knew that in Cup, didn't, it? didn't we, you know? Uh, I did see this one panning out Port Vale. Yeah, um, going on pitch, I saw highlights um, on their game yesterday. And yeah, but after pitch, it, it looks like pure mud and sand, sand to be honest. Yeah. yeah um, so yeah, I think that might affect his game plan. Um, mm. I think passing about on that pitch might be a bit uh, tricky and risky, but we'll see. Um so we saw how we can adapt uh, yesterday. Um, yeah, it's a tricky one, isn't it, Port, uh, Port Vale? Uh, well, would you put up front uh, with Watters? Would you, would you go, go for an Arbor and call up front? Or would you be um, on the shore and see, you know, another strike? See, I ain't got a problem with Norwood, but I always think he's not going to last 90 minutes, Norwood. So he's the best coming off at bench. I'd like to see um, Shaw given a, a chance. Um, we've got him. Um, you should put your faith in him, and that's what we've got him for. Mm. Um, not going to make an impact, just sat up bench, not even coming on. Um, and that, like I said, that's what we've got him for. So, yeah, I'd start him. Uh, him up front we, uh, with Cole. Um, I always think Norwood and Cole's a, like two... How can I put it? I think they're a little bit too similar to play alongside each other. And I think Kurt Shaw might play up a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'd be interested in uh, what team he goes with. I'd like to see Russell start. I think Russell mm. wore a different class um, yesterday. Um, who is going to rest or drop if he does, I don't know. Um, I mean, I thought, I don't know what you all think, but I thought Kane wore a little bit in an Arctic game yesterday, but I don't know. But yeah, we'll, we'll see. But uh, it's going to be tricky, and uh, but I'm confident we'll come away with something. Uh, honestly, do confident we'll come away with something, Charlie. I mean, just going on from that, obviously changing and that. Would you go with a different front pairing? Uh, would you make not all still change, but obviously changes due to injury and suspensions? What would you take on that, be mate, against Port Vale? Yeah, I'd. I'd have to agree with, with Andy. We, I'd, I'd probably sh uh, start Shaw. Um, it'll be good to see how him and Cole uh, work together. You know, um, I just think Cole's not going to make them runs in behind like what as we're doing yesterday. So if Shaw can yeah. come in and do that, mm. it gives Cole the capability to one either hold the ball up or obviously try and play them balls into him. Um, I do agree. I think I'd probably start Russell. I'd, I'd potentially drop Irby Kane. And that's not that he's done anything wrong again. It's going to be a scrappy game. It's going to be a physical game. We know how, how much of a bad condition pitch is in. If you've got that big physical presence there, it's going to stop you know that ball from being bullied out of midfield. He can you know play them balls into, into your front too. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd go with... Uh, I'd go with Shaw and Cole, potentially drop Russell in. Um, and I tell you, I'm going to chuck one in there. I'd potentially be giving um, Nicky Cadden a rest, and I'd probably be starting that Ziad, uh, is it Lakaresh? Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd potentially be giving him, you know, at least 60 minutes because I just think he is quick, he's got a bit of pace about him. And he might just bring something a bit different. So I'd potentially just begin carrying a bit of a rest in this game and, and starting Larkesh. And from what I've heard with Duff in his, his interviews as well, he deserves it. He's one of the hardest workers in training. So 
year ago, mm. stop giving him five minutes, let him have a run out. And if, it, if not, take him off at half time. If he mm. has a stinker, take him off after 20 minutes. But give him a run out, let him have a go and let's see what he's about. Yeah, good point. Uh, Dave, I mean, a few good uh, debates here, a good few uh, suggestions for players coming in. Is there any different or similar that uh, you'd go for Port Vale game, mate? No, I think it's all been said. Uh, I don't like changing winning teams, uh, as I said before. But uh, if you look at the, the schedule over the last couple of weeks and what's coming up, there's a lot of, a lot of games in there, so you have to start rotating here. Yeah. It's all around now. Um, mm -hmm. Long trips as well, you know, down to Exeter, down to Oxford, down to Portsmouth. Um, I suppose Port Vale's relatively closer, but then you've got Cheltenham, another long trip. Yeah. So you're going to have to start uh, rotating your players so that you're not getting run down. But, um, yeah, obviously, um, you have to have someone else up front. Um, like Andy said, I think Norwood and Cole, they don't work as effectively when they're playing together. Uh, they are very similar. Um, and Norwood, he's not a 90-minute a man. He's, um, he has, I think he, he does have more of an impact coming off the bench for me. Uh, he plays better when he comes on in the second half. So, um, you know, give Shaw a go. I mean, no one's – well, I've not seen him. Um, yet, I'm not I'm sure most of the other fans haven't seen him yet. So, um, it's, it's what he can bring to the team. Uh, it's a good point about um, Cadden and Akash. He's um, he's, he's shown his potential when he's come on, but uh, again, when he's started games, I've not been that impressed with him. So, you know, maybe it is time to give him another run out. Um, as I said yesterday, Cadden looked a bit out of it in the first half. I'm not sure if he was tired. You know, we, we've yeah. played a lot of games. You know, we've done a lot of travelling. It's going to take it out of you. So, yeah, that's a good point. I'd, I'd be bringing him in to, you know, have, have a go. And um, mm. as much as I wouldn't want to drop Kane, so I, I thought Kane had a good game yesterday. I thought um, he's one of those that I look at every game and analyse him because I was never a fan when he first came. And he, he seems to me to have a, a decent game, then be out of the game for, a, you know, for 90 minutes come back in and have a decent game and then the next game he's he's not at the races but I thought he had a decent game yesterday he, he wanted the ball all the time he was good down the right um but how can he leave Russell out you know he's he's made a statement mm -hmm. yesterday you know it's one of those things where you you don't envy the manager having to make this decision <laughs> it's a good decision to have to make but it's it's going to be tricky and you know only Duff can do that and you know rather him than me but, you know, Duff will probably surprise us all and put out a completely different team. You never know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, <laughs> we're an headache and an isolate to having it to have a, you know, competition in certain areas and probably pushing, players are pushing one another in the performances and, you know, to get into the team. And I think that's what Duff and Patterson and Devane will be wanting as well. Competition, not to be, you're not going to, just on reputation and your name, get there, but you've also got to put the effort in, like what uh, your guys have said about Laresh. You know, one of the hardest workers here, probably unlucky not to be gaining team due to Cadden. But, you know, with the amount of games that's going to be coming up, you know, week and midweek, week and midweek, it's going to be one of these. It's going to be uh, arresting players at right time and just judging it right, like he did with substitutions as well. He, he, he called that right. So, all being well, we're going to, you know, he's going to pull a few over master strokes as well and uh, tinker and fine tune that. For me, I get where you're coming from with Norwood as well. Um, and I think we being on a probably in every pitch at Port Vale with sand and mud, it probably take it out of him a bit. I think it'll take a, a lot out of players. So I'd go with Shaw as well up front. Um and like I, I, I totally get where Dave's coming from and all. I if I'm if I'm being honest, I ain't seen out of him. I watched a bit on YouTube, but you can do it. it we're always gonna get best parts of that. Be interested to see how he reacts in game off at ball as well, not just off. On ball with it, so again, he's our player. Let's let's use him. We brought him in, so give him a go. And if there's going to be options here on bench, uh, we're going to have Norwood who can come in and mix it up with Best in him. So yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a tricky game, but I, I expect we're going to come away with a result. I don't know what result will be. We'll come on to school predictions in a minute, but I think we is momentum what we're on at the minute. I think it's five unbeaten for us now. Uh, if we can keep that carrying on, whether it be a draw or a win. Because, uh, like I say, and Dave talked on it as well. We've got Cheltenham away. It's be like a local game for Gaffer because he comes from back neck at Woods. But for us, it's a it's a bit of a travel down there. So away at Port Vale, 
away at Cheltenham, then it's Derby at home. So some tricky, tough games coming up. And uh, now we're going back position. We don't want to be like laying it slip. So score prediction time. This is going to be a good one. I'm going to come to Charlie first. Score prediction. And who do you think will be influential player, mate, on the on the night? Um, I'm going to go 1-0. 1-0. Because it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be tough to play football. I think it's just going to be whoever takes that chance. Um, be a bit scrappy. Be a bit end to end. One nil, and I think influential Thomas or Connell, any of them two. It's it's just you've got to you, you've got to be ready. It's out could happen. Out could happen, Andy. Um, I'll go with what I first feel, and I think it a one-one draw. Um, I don't think Pitcher is going to play um, a big part of it. It's something that we're not well, we're not used to playing on pitches like that at home anyway. Away, like obviously, is a bit of yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It used to be like a ploughed field at one point, isn't it? The in, big in match we visited on. Uh... On a certain channel, when you look at some of them pictures back in the 70s and 80s. Oh, God, yeah. And even with snow on, and they've just <laughs> done fine that. that these snowflakes now, they were playing the conditions <laughs> like that, wouldn't they? Get yellow ball out and um, <laughs> we're very crack on. Uh, but yeah, 1-1. Um, one, one, um, and yeah, I think, again, um, like I said on previous video, um, this stage at season, I think it's... Uh, uh, you know, a, a lot of onus is on captain, so I'm, I'm going to go for Anderson, uh, key uh, player, just to keep things organised at back, uh, which I think he did really well yesterday. Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, like I said, one one and key player Anderson for me. Key player Anderson, Dave. Um, I'm going to positive and go for a two one away win. I think it's a place we we don't really do very well. We go to yeah. It's uh, one of them cities that have not had the best of best of results, but um, now I think uh, taking out the confidence from yesterday and um, the run we're on, mm. I, th I think um, I think two a two one win, and um, if Russell starts, I think he'll be the man to watch controlling that midfield. So uh, I think that's where it'll be won and lost in midfield on on the is it Tuesday or is it Wednesday? I'm not sure what night the game is, but. Um, and, um, yeah, yeah, it's be, yeah, for me, it's going to be a midfield battle, I think. And um, if he starts, it's going to be it's going to be him. If not, someone like Kane, I think, is going to be the important man. Yeah, I'm going two one like you, Dave. I think it's going to be a test of a character for a lot of for, for a lot of players. Um, I think with his momentum and his confidence, what we've had, just to carry it on, I can see something happening from a set piece. Um, I got, I said two note for game against Cambridge, and I wish I'd have had a bet on because James messaged me. He says, I bet you wish I had a bet now, didn't you? I went, yeah, but I'm going 2 1 away. Um, and I kind of, if Russell does start, I, it's, I think it could be one and lost in midfield this this game, but it stayed at pitch. Um, defense has got to be switched on, obviously. Front pair until it's always it going to be. I'm going to go, again, it's going to be the same names what keep cropping up, but I'm going to go Luke O'Connell. If Russell starts, I could see Russell taking it, taking game under control kind of thing, but I get what Charlie said earlier on. Thomas Strats were trying diagonal balls and these balls through to Watters early on, trying to open it up. Obviously, that's not going to happen because Watters is out. I've just got a feeling that Luke O'Connell's going to try and get out of it and it needs to be one in midfield. And if if it's not winning midfield, I can I just can see it being a, a scrappy one defence to other, not really happening, um, and just bypassing midfield altogether. Just due to, just, just due to state of pitch, you know, sand and ruts and divots. It's only going to cut up it was through mm. the evening. Um, but yeah, I'm going two one, and I'm going Luke Connell. Um, if Russell starts, possibly sweating, but Luke Connell for me. So Andy. Charlie, Dave, it's been a pleasure having you on. Um, 
appreciate your, your feedback and your content and different different choices as well. Some good debates here. Uh, Laresh being being one of them, we we can mm-hmm. as well. So yeah, good good shout out that. Uh, people are watching, please like, subscribe, and share. Have your comments below as well. Uh, let us know your thoughts on Manit Match. Let us know where you'll be starting against Port Vale uh, away. It's going to be a tricky, tricky game coming up. But as always, Andy, Charlie, and Dave, thanks for joining. Uh, yes. Appreciate it. No problem. One thing left to say you Reds. <laughs>